Christian podcast in the entire universe. That's right, my friends. My name is Beto Gudiño, all the way from Costa, Mexico, California. It's Costa Mesa, but I'm from Mexico. You guys know me today. We have a very deep, profound, important topic, probably the number one topic in our society, in our entire world today. Okay, I'm not even going to say what topic. We're just going to go deep into it. And today we have Lina Cebula with us today okay so let's welcome her to the show hello guys thank you so much better for having me that's like really cool soundtrack to come <laughs> into nice Sounds yeah so first fun. we party then we go deep right yes okay lena how you doing today really good thank you so much for having me awesome okay well we're gonna start with an emoji reaction all right so we're going to our belief meter to kick off the episode we go to the emoji tombola. And today we're kicking off with the divine emoji. Divine emoji. Okay, Lina, so this is your idea. Why are you resonating with the crown emoji today? Well, definitely. And it's interesting that I pick the crown because all day today I was thinking that I'm a daughter of the king mm. and I'm a precious and I'm priceless and I'm royalty so when you show me those emojis I'm like I have to go for a crown I am a princess wow love it okay there we have it she is a princess All right, my friends. Okay, so today's episode is, is pretty deep. And I had a few shows before where I talked to people about topics like you no know, pornography or you know, sexual sin and things like that. And I think I've, I've never spoken with a person that's kind of like on the other end of, of these situations, you know. And, and I think for a topic that's, that's really big in our society... Um, we usually hear from the people that are kind of like on, on this side of the story, right? But not on the other side. And I think today, I only have one question for you, Lina. And really, my question is, what is your story? Yes, absolutely. I love being sharing my story right now. But honestly, after 20 years of silence, I could have never imagined that one day this story going to be... Um, broadcast it all over social media that mm. I'm going to be standing in front of hundreds of people and sharing my story because in the past I was afraid of judgment and rejection mm. because I thought it was a story of shame, guilt and condemnation. But now I know it's God's story of salvation, of overcoming adversity and driving after trauma. So I was born and raised in Ukraine, and my parents really struggled in their marriage, so they became an alcoholics and lost well-paid jobs. The government turned off the electricity and hot water for outstanding bills, and my home was infested with black mold, cockroaches, and mice. It was really wow. nasty. And um, I was hungry all the time. I was literally starving. And I have um, a home full of strangers who brought booze and drugs, but they actually brought food as well. So it was my opportunity to eat. So I was mingled um, between those adults all the time. So from very young age, I became an easy target for those guys. Mm -hmm. And my parents didn't protect me. Government didn't protect me. Police didn't protect me. So I was really abused and beaten and raped numerous times in, in the basement of my own apartment. And um, when I really thought things couldn't get any worse, one month before my 15th birthday, I woke up with severe abdominal pain and I was scared and confused only to realize that I was actually in labor. Wow. I didn't know I was pregnant. I didn't know who her father was. So my baby died three months later from health complications. And honestly, I carried this 
teeny tiny casket to the cemetery in my arms and for the next 20 years that image like plagued in my mind and my soul I I suffer with anxiety and panic attacks and depression and I start using alcohol and drugs to medicate my pain because it was easier to be high and checked out for a while rather than feel like worthless and hopeless and helpless and so broken. So I actually uh, start using heroin because it it would hold like the most time. I, I actually never thought about the fact that I never tried to kill myself per se, mm -hmm. but I thought if I don't wake up, it's going to be okay. So this is my lot. And then years went by, I hardly remember anything. But then one day I have like almost like this moment of awakening and I was so tired of this lifestyle. But there is no hopes or dreams for the street junkie, you know. Mm. And then I saw people like dying around me. People went to jail and I thought I didn't want to go any of those ways. So I was looking for some kind of like way out. And then through our mutual friend, I um, met this lady. Oh my goodness, guys. She was wealthy and beautiful and she was kind and she was compassionate to me. And you have to understand long time. I didn't have this kind of interaction with people who actually care. And she brought me to her house. She offered me fancy coffee and sweets. And she like, was so loving that I felt safe. I felt like really wonderful. And then she offered me a job. There was no specifics, just a job. And I was so eager um, to escape. So I agree without really much thinking. Like now I know there was so many red flags and I could be... Mm. Uh, thinking, but the fact is that the way how it's all work out, I just said yes. I said yes to anything they asked me to do. So her team went to work, and then like I still was like on heroin. I hardly remember I report or how I went through customs. I'll never know. I just one morning woke up here in this Muslim uh, call to prayer. Allah Akbar ran out so i was like so confused because i was in a foreign country wow and um yeah i ended up in cairo egypt and then they forced us to crawl under the bar wire where they sold us into brothel into israel so there actually which is um a, a bizarre like it's very important what brothel you end up in because the girls who came with me were missing, died, never heard of again. So I've been bought by a family business and I actually had two bodyguards who would protect me. So honestly, by default, I quit heroin because there was no another dose and I survived. Then I was clean like physically and um they fed me and i made money mm. so you thinking like oh my gosh this is horrible situation but compared to back to back home this is literally was almost a great for me and um the craziest part that one of my bodyguard was sharing the gospel with the girls and nobody ever stopped him wow and i was so attracted to this human being, not not physically or sexually, but but he was like man that I never met a human like that. Because in my life, man was violent, angry, mm. drunk, um, abusive, like all this like evil evil thing that we we do as a human. And I know like it's it's it just. It's just life, you know, it just, I know right now I do understand like why we behave like that because 
um, there's so much trauma. So hurting people hurt people, mm. like just Harris said. But it was interesting because he was talking about God and I never heard anyone to speak like that. So he gave me his kid's Bible. He was sharing the stories. And when my father, um, my grandfather actually have a heart attack, he brought me to the Berlin Wall in Jerusalem to pray. And God actually heard and answered my prayers because I knew that people like me don't deserve any mercy. Mm -hmm. And I was like filled with this sense of shame, but God show up. And now after all these years, I thought, God is so cool. He's so amazing. Mm -hmm. He heard me when I came from like brothel to pray to him. I was like alcoholic, drug addict, prostitute. And he just saw my heart and he saved my grandfather. And mm -hmm. actually, this is what triggered me to leave this kind of business. And guys, this one thing, you would never leave this kind of situation alive unless you have been rescued. Again, by the grace of God, I was um, allowed to go home after almost two years. I pay all my dues and I was free. And um, one of my other bodyguard, who was like a brother to me, stole and cheated me out of all of my position that I accumulate. And my trustworthy aunt back home stole and spent all my money. So all my dream to start a new life and build something different for myself just disappeared. So I ended up on heroin again and became a right hand of um, number one drug dealer in my city. So I had unlimited amount of drugs, money, influence, but it wasn't safe because I knew I'm going to die of overdose or end up in jail or like even being murdered for that drugs and money. So this time I willingly sold myself into sex trade because that's all I knew. And um, this time they brought me to Canada. But here in Canada, I was over 20 years old when first time in my life I heard about human rights. Mm. So I took the risk and I ran away. And I live in shelter. I learn English from level zero. And in 2000, um, um, well, 2011, I give my life through cry to Christ through my husband's now family. And now I'm a mama of three kiddos. I am Christian. I published my autobiography about the miracles of God in my life. Actually, it's called a miraculous, my journey from hell to heaven. Mm -hmm. And um, now I share my story publicly. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity, Beto, to uh, share the story with your audience. Wow. No, I'm super grateful. And uh, I can I, 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 I don't have any reference in my mind for the kind of story you're telling me. Like, this is it. I just wanted to come here with that one question because I've, I've never heard any story like that in my life, nor have I experienced, like, being part of something like that. And so it's, I mean, one, it's miraculous for sure that God has you in a totally different space now with a family and I want to talk about in a, in a little bit and how redemptive family is for you but before we do that um, just kind of like a, a couple maybe uh, questions that that spurred out in me when when you were talking one is like what what was the age when you were kind of like in Israel how old were you um, around that time yes I just turned 18 because I remember uh. they brought me to get the uh, passport, you know, the traveling document. And, mm. and that's one of the points when I was like, why do I need that? Mm -hmm. And they actually, uh, there was like part of grooming. There's, that's why I'm talking about this, this time too, about grooming, because sometimes uh, people get lured into it, you know, just mm. like it happens with this lady. She was kind to me. They dressed me up. They brought me to salon. They cleaned my hair, you know. They they got me document. And, and my husband working upstairs on his laptop, and he's like, the power went out. I'm like, why? He's like, well, I don't know. And he went check, and I hear... And I'm like, okay, how long it's gonna be? What is that? And then I hear like, boom, 
it's our security alarm, like a security for the house when mm -hmm. online. I'm like, what? So you just cut me off, you know? So bizarre. Yeah, like so many weird things happening. And mm -hmm. I have like tons of people praying for me because of this book release and I'm speaking and I actually have like huge presentation um, on November 24 where I'm going to sell my book and there's not Christian audience too and they already bought my book before and they loved it so they actually called me to speak and I'm bringing the book and she's like and I give you a table I'm like are you kidding me this is God's story going everywhere so while I'm so exciting my kid got sick like I have like weird dreams you know mm. everything like start happening that's wow. why I'm walking around and tell that I'm a child of God and then daughter of the king and you cannot scare me. But it, mm. this is isn't that crazy how it's happening? So yes. yeah, so I'm glad that we can come back and, and just restart it because I was like, man, that was so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I think I think that speaks to the like how powerful this industry is and and the darkness that's in this industry because this is this is the number one problem in the world right like the, the internet mm. came and then this whole yeah. thing with pornography but what's on the other end of, of pornography mm -hmm. well it's it's people who have been have been slaved into this type of life yes. and it's big i mean it's I, i can only imagine how much i mean and i've i've heard the stories right how much money is poured into into this mm -hmm. industry so the number one industry in the world so there's is no i mean for sure we're gonna need prayer and i was even praying you know as the as kind of like we Thank lost you. we lost power i'm like okay i i kind of forgot to think wow this we are we are fighting against principalities of Amen. darkness right and power so this is real this is real and your your story is so important so you were telling me you were uh, around 18 years old when you were moved to israel And you had all these people uh, working, kind of like you know, two security guards that kind of protected you, uh, in a sense. And the other question I had, because you mentioned two other things that caught my attention. One was that you, that God answered your prayer. So I was going to ask you, what were you praying back then? And the other one is just kind of like to understand how this works. Um, did you speak English back in the day? was or, or was what was your like mother tongue was there any did that have any role in in you know because i mean you're in different countries right so was kind of like the common language everybody speaks did you pick up english when you were little or did you have to learn it what was kind of like the 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 language that moved people around in this business yes no honestly it was very interesting when i was trafficked from ukraine everybody spoke Russian, but when I live in Israel, I actually was able to speak Hebrew, which is very interesting because um, I was thinking in Russian, and then I could translate. I learned like bunch of words, and I can put. I could put it into Hebrew. I could even like sing songs. It was so bizarre. I couldn't read wow. and write, but it was very very similar. Uh, structure of sentences as back home so I didn't know how to learn this is how I just um, it was necessary to communicate so that's how I learned which is so funny when I came to Canada and tried the same approach it was disaster mm -hmm. it took me three years just to figure out how to put uh the words together so it would make sense because it's completely opposite so if um i was using the same approach it was like a bunch of nonsense nobody could understand what i'm talking about but as you guys noticed i am a mouth in the body of christ so i want to speak so i was i was looking for different avenues like i took esl classes it's the english as a second language here in canada so i actually learned how to speak and and structure properly and probably it took me three years when i realized oh i actually thinking in english or mm. oh i can i can speak and uh, it was really hard and it was very frustrating 
to learn new cultures, new rules and regulations, try to f- figure out where you fit in and like how to survive. But the difference between these two countries that in uh, in Israel, I knew that I was enslaved. You mm. know, I knew that I have no freedom to go by myself anywhere or that um, they I had no documents. I didn't have um, any rights. I knew that I could be deported anytime. And we have like few police raids as well. So I knew that um, I was just a tool, you know, I could be here i could be there like you know i could be dead or missing but Mm. what interesting though about this well-oiled machine because police came to our brothel and they didn't take the girls you know so i'm like okay i'm like okay but when I was actually leaving. I told you guys that I was um I was uh, um like illegally there. So like I didn't have the visas necessary to actually be in that country because I was crawling under barbed wire these tunnels that they have like in the middle of the desert and when they look into my passport where I was almost two years. Do you think somebody arrested me and questioned and investigate and give them consequences? No. They look into my passport. They look at me. I was like less than 20 year old or somewhere around 20 year old. Now I'm still thinking a kid because I have a 16 Mm -hmm. year old and it's still a kid, you know? So they look at me look at my documents look at each other and they put me on the plane and i went home that's what make me understand that they know everybody Mm. know you know what i mean and now we're talking about the situation of human trafficking now we have these films like sound of freedom by the way guys like if you didn't see it i'm strongly recommend you to see because it's such a huge awareness tool and you're gonna understand how was was this um crazy well-oiled machine of human trafficking and nobody's safe you know you're thinking Mm. like oh yeah sure she was on drugs and uh, her family was alcoholics and everything you know in this time of the social media the grooming remember i was talking and why i'm doing like that it's like it's alluring Mm. You know, when you're fishing and you're trying to get that that little fish with something shiny, and that shiny right now can be anything. Like after COVID, it can be a belonging, attention, being part of something, you know, mm. uh, being loved, being cared for. Like, and now people work and busy. So those kids like on internet or on social media, oh my gosh, they are little prey. <laughs> because the predators there and they're not evil remember how i told you about that wonderful lady who loved me and cared for me Mm. that's how they are but this is their job this is the job so you don't figure out that it's evil because what you do when you know it's evil you run another way so you need to be in in that you know like have those blinders on you know to know that oh there and there they actually have all the different ways to approach. So for example, like there's like, uh, like Romeo, you know, and he thinks like, oh, look, she needs love and care. So they have that approach. There's another girl who, who talking about problems with the father. Oh, so she needs like father figure. So she needs mother. Like, you know, they literally playing on all of us, um, ours, like basic needs, Mm -hmm. you know, being loved, being, um, for me, it was like even like being fed and dressed, you know, that, that bazaar. But now, because even in this amazing country where we have everything, you know, our kids are still lonely and busy Mm -hmm. and 
they looking for that they prey on that like psychological needs and they feed us what we need and that's how easy to get dropped anyone even people from a good wonderful family but if they are busy and working and they teen just alone and lonely especially with times of like anxieties and depression they will give that to that teen and there it's gonna be a trouble wow it, that's true i mean that's that's how it works and I, i guess what you're saying is they don't come as evil they appear as angels of light right and that's exactly what the bible says when uh you know you think of satan he's not gonna appear and and be like oh he's awful i don't want to follow that guy they're gonna appear as as people who will pretend to love you and pretend to care for you that's that's deep and that's a, a call to awareness maybe to to people because like you're saying right on social media and our phones it's everywhere and it's so easy to fall into okay. these traps and be lured in uh what was the prayer you were praying when you were you no know, they took you to the wailing wall and you said there was a prayer that got answer what what was the prayer you were praying absolutely first of all now i'm so blown away and grateful to god that he gave me this opportunity and i do believe i i encounter holy spirit even as a non-believer although they say like you have to accept the christ into your heart but remembering how it felt and now when i'm praying for people and i have this encounter i know exactly that that god met me there mm -hmm. in this uh, way and actually when i was praying i knew exactly who i was and i think like that sense of shame and all those dark deeds that that i saw in front of my eyes actually make me humble and that be bend that knee and surrender to God and tell him that I am a sinner. You know, that time, like I didn't use this lingo because that mm. time I didn't know it's called sinner. I just knew that I'm so bad mm. and I need this divine intervention because I, I had like this crazy belief that if God not step in, it's not going to happen because my grandfather was um, like a father to me. And that's why I said, father at that time because my grandparents actually took me into their house in right right before that like all the discord happened so i had some time in my life when i was very young maybe six seven years old when i actually had this an amazing life with my grandparents when they disciplined me they trained me they taught me how to read and write they taught me how to play chess, understand the clock. They took me to vacation. So it was like normal life. And um, and I love them. And that's why I lied to them. So they didn't know when, where I was and what was happening to me at this point. And there, uh, when my grandfather had a heart attack, he was actually was in coma. And I saw this like crazy dream. And if you guys ever read my book, it's like I do believe that that's how God speaks to us to um, through dreams and I'm very visual as well. So I saw a dream and I knew that my grandfather is dying. When I call my grandmother, she always lied to me, uh, not in a bad way, but she always says, oh, you're in another country by, by yourself. And she thought I'm doing some, I don't know, work. But um, she said, we are here together and you take care of yourself. And she was trying to care for me and protect me. But I said to her, what's happening with my grandpa? And she's like, who told you this? And I'm like, oh, so what's going on? And she said, he is um, in, um, in the hospital. And she said, um, he's in coma. But that's what triggered me. She said, when they um, the doctor come out and he said, Um, now it's in God's hands. And it's very interesting that they say that hmm. because my country in those times like was like completely, there was like no faith, no relationship with God. There was not even religion. It was so messed up. So it's like, I, I cannot even say they were all ideas, but in my my city, you, you will know that there was a discord. So when people would say it's in God's hands, that means like 
uh, we wash our hands and we cannot do anything about it. So there you go. If he survives, then it's on God. If he dies, it's on God. So, but when she said that to me, I'm like, okay, if if she's saying that this is in God's hand, we have to go and ask God to for help. And I go to my bodyguard who actually took on his day off, he took me into Jerusalem. But it was so interesting because I have this humongous faith that God will do it for him. And I said that to God when I was praying, I say, God, not for me. I know I don't deserve anything. I know who I am. I know I'm not worthy. I'm not even worthy of this audience. I don't worthy that you show up for me or hear me or respond to me. But for him, please. So I was pleaded for his life because I knew if my grandpa passed away, my grandma goes right after him. And um, I was like, I was so lost. I didn't know what to say. I just was saying the same thing. I know that I'm not worthy, but please save him. And I put my hands like on that wall. And it was so interesting because it was like, I don't know, 60 degrees heat, but the wall was actually cool. And if you guys don't know what is the Valen Wall is, it's actually the place where Jesus prayed, like when he woke, woke uh, the earth that day. But the coolest part that it's original, I think it's two feet original and the rest of it, they build it. So it's, it's look better. So it's interesting that I put my hands and the wall was like very cool. And I was like, why it's cool? It's so bizarre. It shouldn't be like the stone should not be cool. And I had like this mind blowing peace come over me. And it was such an amazing experience because I've, I had like full body experience and I knew 100% that my grandpa going to be okay. And then he recovered after coma. He didn't have any issues, not with his speech, not with his body. You know, sometimes after the heart attack, that's huge. Like you need to do like recovery and stuff like that. But honestly, there was like no signs of him being like almost dead whatsoever. And what interesting though, when I come back home, I chicken down to tell him that I pray for him. But he was wearing a cross, which is like wow. my grandparents were like, oh, pff, we did everything ourselves. They've been raised in like communism and all that stuff. So they would never give like any glory to anything else or anyone else. And it was so interesting because like he was like wearing this little cross. And I'm like, what is that? And I was walking with my grandpa and he said to me, God saved me. Wow. But I was so new in my faith that okay. I chickened down to tell him because I thought like he's gonna be like I don't know bashing on me because that's always been happening all my life but then he said to me that God saved me and I'm like wow this is this is great so yeah did, amazing experience. did you ever tell him did you ever end up telling him that you did pray for him or did you just I didn't. never I didn't. wow but, yeah but I actually, somehow he I knew yeah, he. This is he said to me that God saved him. Yeah. I didn't tell him that it was me have any part of it. So it's really cool. Wow, that's incredible! It reminds me uh, of this verse that came to my mind, Acts two seventeen, where it says, "In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy." Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. What an epic story. I mean, that that's incredible. I'm sure we can go into many other details, but I would oh, love yeah. to dive a little bit into like the redemptive side of, of now having a family. Because I think uh, on my view, at least, right, and for sure you'll, you'll tell your experience, but from my end, I feel like what you were experiencing is like the complete opposite of what a family uh, is supposed to be in the end, right? Like I think, like I have three kids, right? And I have my wife and 
And I think it's just the biggest joy and gift I've ever been given as a human to have a family where I can, you know, see them grow and take them to the park and play soccer and do like fun things. Uh, so how did you get there, right? And, and how has that played a role? Um, I mean, has it been redemptive or let's just let's just talk about like, how did you get to having your own family and what does that mean to you? Well, when I came to Canada, I actually and start learning English. Uh, it was time for me to actually dream and to choose my life because I had the opportunity to start from the clean slate per se. So I actually apply and graduated from cosmetology um, course, you know, government credit course, because I didn't have any money. So for the newcomers, they offer this amazing opportunity. So I took it. And actually one of the ladies, um, receptionist, he, she said to me, because I was like almost one and a half year I was in Canada. And she said, you will not pass this test. And I'm like, you know what? Let me fall on my own. You know, don't mm. tell me. And I was like, from 100 people, I was, um, there was 30 people chosen to do this cosmetology course. And I was one of those 30 people. And I actually ended up being one of the few people who after finishing that course became a hairstylist and on the business. So never listen to the doubters, okay? <laughs> Just like I if like you that. have a dream, go after it. That was my point. Mm. Um, and then it was very interesting because I was definitely not fitting for this society because like I was trying to figure out um, how to speak, how to dress, how to behave because now I was... Uh, clean was no drugs and the behavior have to be changed to be normal and I do quotation marks because normal it's so different for me now but I try to imitate the normal people and um, I decide okay so you need the titles you need diplomas trophies medals anything that I could uh, fill this void and and feel that I'm worthy and valuable, you know, and um, I went to this crazy achieve mode, I started building my empire, I called it, you know, and all of these accomplishments, it was like just very temporary celebration. Mm. And there was empty, I still was like really rude, obnoxious, um, and very, very angry, you know, I was broken. This is like just not, the trauma does not disappear because your mm. circumstances are changing. And then I um, I met this boy and honestly, he did not fit into my plan, you know, but um, I fall in love with him. He was another shiny, shiny man into like that came into my life and he was a Christian. Mm. And that's what attracted me to him because he treated me like a lady. I don't know how he sat through that, all this nonsense, but um, yeah, so I ended up uh, being part of this Christian family and he was actually a pastor kid. Wow. And, and so interesting though, that um, um, I fell in love. Uh, I fell in love and now I understand I fell in love in Jesus and this man. But that time I didn't know. And Jesus loved me through that man mm. the way I needed to be loved. And then I got pregnant. Our beautiful baby girl was born. And I wanted to be a good wife and a mother. But my past tormented me. And it's very interesting because I want him to know everything. I actually wrote him a letter because I knew that I would not marry me because I did not deserve a healthy family, healthy relationships. But he actually said to me, your past is between you and God. So I love you for who you are now. And honestly, ladies, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, I need that one in my life. So my trouble disappear. But you know what? It still was a hard path because he didn't know our trauma was like colliding all the time. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I do believe that we're survived by the grace of God. So I was working on 
my mental health because now I honestly I didn't realize how bad my anxieties and depressions are because now I'm clean I chose to be clean not doing drugs or booze or anything and actually deal with the life on clean for this man and for this baby but honestly some women dream about this life I thought I'm gonna be dead by then so I have no nothing in my imagination instead that now it was here and I was responsible for this little human being and oh my goodness I know why God allowed this to happen to me then because I assumed if I get all these like trophies diplomas if I get the title if I gonna be a wife if I gonna be um, a mother if I have a clean home then I gonna have peace but it didn't happen it was the one of the worst experiences of my life to go to through postpartum depression on my own with no help with no support with no drugs with no medication and i was responsible again for this tiny baby and you know what the devil came to do he wrecked the havoc on my mental health because he gave me like vision i could feel it again to holding that little casket in my hands I could smell the smell in the hospital. I could see her little body and clothes of my first child that I buried when I was a kid. Mm. And it was it was so bad. I had so much fear. I brought my little baby to the hospital probably 100 times and they just say, oh, she's teasing. Oh, she has a fever. You okay? You okay? Mm. And then my husband says, you know um well that time my boyfriend he said you're a good mom stop it you're not in control of life and death god is and honestly when he said that and i wasn't a christian but i wanted i want this burden to take it away because i thought if she gonna die he will kick me out because he gonna say that i'm useless wife and a mother because i was and then I end up in the streets doing drugs again, and that's end of my life. But giving all to God, knowing that my husband gonna be, a, you know, not blaming for me for anything because he see how hard I strive to be the best person I can be for this family. It's literally like it just gave me so much hope. And then I start going to church with his family just to be, you know just impress his parents and be yeah. like uh because that time he wasn't married and they're like oh you're living in sin i'm like what is that uh. back home they have like like you know back home the um what is that union um like for the government as long as like your couple paying your taxes together like what is this union called but, a civil uh, union yeah, I have something like that. So you don't really need to marry it or anything. And I'm like, what do you mean I'm not his wife? I have his child. I'm I'm washing his clothes. I'm cooking <laughs> for him. Like, and we're loyal to each other. We're doing all the like um, uh, marriage stuff. Uh, but anyway, so I went there, and um, there I went to Alpha Course. And on the third day of Alpha Course, I give my life to Christ. Wow. And I kid you not, like I have like this is another body experience just like i had at that well in wall because i felt like so much peace and i was so overwhelmed i was crying and um yeah god gave me like this peace beyond all understanding and actually now philippians 4 4 and 9 it's been my life verse because honestly christ always show up with his peace like I, like he never refused me peace and this is one thing that I could not earn, deserve, buy it, get it, no drugs, no anything could give me this sense of like, I'm okay, I'm fine. And guess what? I'm still like not on vindication. I'm still um, went through everything on the drive. But when I give my life to Christ, I literally like my anxieties disappear. And my depression like i still have them but i'm deal with them 
like completely different you know sometimes like it's constructive i cannot say like oh my traumas all disappear and everything's gone but like i literally i know i'm a new creation because mm. i'm i'm so healed and the the amazing part my body is healthy like my liver is healthy do you know like the people who use like heroin crack coke alcohol they're not okay they're not okay mentally they're not okay physically their lungs have holes they liver like rotten i have none of that like literally like they check everything in my body after i have like twins and some issues with my health so i'm like oh maybe it's this maybe it's that i have like these checkups like my blood test like off the charts like you cannot do this by yourself you know and the fact that like i'm sleeping and i'm calm and like it's it just amazing so i know 100 percent that when i got baptized god heal me and heal my body mind and soul but of course it took me a long while now it's been 20 years what you've seen today i still doing coaching i'm still doing therapies now when i'm smarter and i know that god provides like so many different avenues to be uh, and with the church and with the small group and sharing your burdens and learning i'm still improving but Oh my goodness. I'm so glad that she you know, like that he gave me this time to experience everything by myself and try to get everything on my own. And when I got everything, I still was like I was worse than I had like nothing, but it's kind of like was bizarre because this desire to have everything an assumption that then you get the peace, then you get worth, then you get value then you get everything and i got everything and i had nothing mm. and only now with christ remember the beginning of our podcast recording i am a princess i have inheritance i i have a crown i belong i'm a child of god and you know what it's like above and beyond that give me and worth and value i don't have to be anything else you know i'm already am that's so much fire right there that's so good lena cebula and uh i just want to say for the people that maybe don't know what alpha course is because you mentioned that as as kind of where you gave your life to christ is a it's a tool that christians use where they get to invite people who are non-christian and you watch a video and it usually has questions right and then the people that are not non-christian they get to ask the questions you don't need to you know pretend like you know the answer or anything it's just like okay i believe there's a god or maybe there's no god and you know it's just a welcoming place and i i love that you mentioned that because i think you know I'm, i'm thinking of maybe doing a future podcast with people from from alpha so that would be so great you want to say something by the way if you post my website On my website, I have a resources page and alpha course mm. there as well. So you guys can go and check it out. And what's cool about it that they're talking about faith and Jesus and non-judgmental atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So like anybody can come and just learn. And you know what? If it's yours, take it. If it's not this time, nobody gonna pressure you or do anything. So it's very cool. But yeah. That's, That's so really cool. Helpful. Okay, thank you, Lena. So we're gonna go into our final part of the episode. I wish we could talk more, you know, but I guess I that's know. why you have a book. Uh, but we're gonna go through our emojis, and this is what I want to do to to finish the episode. I want you to think as you answer like each emoji. I want you to think of people that are maybe on on the spectrum of this industry, right? Whatever, whatever end of the spectrum they might be. They might be people who are being lured into it. They might be people who are already in it uh, and they're somehow found this podcast and your story. So I want you to think about them as mm -hmm. you answer these, these emojis. And, uh, and I guess, you know, it'll be a hopeful walk through the emojis, I think, you know, because you're gonna, just your story is so valuable and what God has done through you and God's gonna use it. All right, so here we go. We're gonna start with our blasphemous emoji. So from your vantage point, what is the worst idea out there? Hmm. 
I think the lies that b we believe about the enemy, that this is um, not the problem that happening around us, you know, that it's so camouflaged that we believe like, oh, it's the problem like in uh, happening, like human trafficking happening in some third world country, you know, not here. So please, please watch your kids watch your family member like watch like learn the red flags learn about these issues because when you know you will be vigilant and you're gonna be watching so the people who are groomed right now for human trafficking and if you assume why this is guy like so nice to me like why this is happening because people don't give you money for nothing people don't give you and shower you with all this extra and i know god put this little um uh thing like common sense or mm. or you know that like um trigger alarm you know that we feel like danger danger when you feel that just follow through on that because something is there Please don't do any rush decision for people who already there and um, something really happening. They have like some pictures of you or whatever it is, because that's how they they actually keep people around because they use shame and fear mm -hmm. and condemnation. So if you are already there, know that you are not alone and you have hope because wherever you are, if you ask for help, anyhow that you can, please, please ask for help. If you cannot speak, write a letter, like give the letter to one person that you trust. Mm. If you, if you like trapped somewhere that you actually physically cannot be like out, find a way call 911 or your local police services. Find someone, tell someone, and they're gonna come and help you like this is another lie that i want to break that you're alone that you are so shameful so not worthy of being rescued and safe this is lie and i don't want you to believe that wherever you are whatever you're doing if you have a desire to be done and 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 run away or being rescued you have that choice you have a choice you have a choice and for people who just come out from it and think that you're not worthy to be loved, that you're not worthy to be um, have peace or to belong, that's another lie. You are worthy. You are significant. Your life is valuable. And guess what? One day God will use this mess for your message. And mm. you're going to be thriving. Just, you know what? There is no due date on healing. It's been 20 years for me and that's I've been sharing my story for three years you know in the beginning I was like crying and I was saying God why are you making me do this mm. people already know me like I have this carefully crafted persona that I hide behind of success and the mother of three kids and I was part of the church and you know what God took me back to write my autobiography and into the past. He wanted me to look back with him when I already loved, saved, redeemed, forgiven. And you know what it did? It brought me freedom mm -hmm. because I have so much compassion on that little Lena. I reconciled with my family. I see this is what's just happening. This is part of life. And you know what he did? I'm doing this for other people now. I support women to see this, like God's heart through mentoring them, them and, and coaching them. I want them to be unconfident and assertive individuals despite of trauma. How would they do that without knowing all this trauma and knowing that it's possible to overcome? You know how I know? Because I am that person who mm. walked through this hell to heaven and i do believe that heaven starts now do you think my life is perfect no do you think everything is perfect no but i know that i know that god will never leave me never forsake me never give up on me and remember that i was building my empire so when god 
came into my life. He said, now you're going to work for my kingdom. And now I hear the Holy Spirit saying to me every time after like even podcasts like this, I feel so fired up and he's like, isn't this better? Mm. And yes, it is so much better. I'm so grateful to be a mom and a wife and a housekeeper. And I'm so grateful for this life I live. And guess what? I'm grateful for my past too, because without this past, I wouldn't be this woman who I am now. And I love this woman. Remember, she's child of God, the daughter of the King. And I, I want you to think about that too. I want you to look at me, hear me and say, if she can do it, I can do it. If God did this for her, God do it for me. And he will come into your life. He's not going to force, he's not going to pressure you. But if you honestly say, God, like I'm bad, I don't deserve this. But this woman say that you have this amazing free gift of salvation. Please come into my life and be my Lord and Savior and do the stuff that she, you did for her and see what happened. Because I know my God, he loved to show up and show off. Mm. So there you go. <laughs> so good. Wow, I love how you said, isn't this better? And I think that's the hope Jesus offers, Jesus Christ, and, and it's so hopeful. Okay, Lina, so we're going to end the episode where, where do you want to point people to, to, to you know, get your book or know your story more or find the resources you were mentioning? Absolutely. You guys can go and um, look through my website and it's linacebula.ca so l-e-n-a-c-e-b u-l-a dot c-a and there are so many like cool things like you can learn about the church about alpha course there's people that i partner up um over the course of my work that you can actually look and see what they do in and for human trafficking and and it, like in general their work is amazing the people like on the ground doing such amazing work to help other people so from there you can listen to my podcast which called love and beloved and i do believe that's what we here for and um you can purchase my book from there as well so if you wanted to have a signed copy you can email me at linacebula at gmail.com and honestly if you just google my name you can find me on all the social media you know my my son goes to me like mom you are famous <laughs> but isn't that funny because i was hiding for half of my life mm. and i would never go public and now i'm public with god and and i'm just asking like invite me invite me so if you guys hear this um our podcast like uh, or see this video and say like oh i have a platform i love this woman please invite me because i love sharing my story i love encouraging people i love talking about jesus and about myself you know so yes and i love talking in general so <laughs> yeah invite me to speak so, so good all right my friends there you have it what an amazing hopeful episode just want to remind you that we are on every single platform apple Podcasts, spotify roku tv facebook youtube like all of those i even have a show in spanish with my wife that's really awesome but it's in spanish so for those spanish speakers out there go check it out the best way is to visit us at christianpodcast.com and then you can find all the resources there too and links to all the episodes thank you for being here 